Drago's secret is exposed, and the misfits are now cancelled. I am Haru Ren, welcome to my review of episode 13 of Bakugan Gen 3. So, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen this episode yet, go back and watch it now. But if you have, sit back, relax, and enjoy my review of episode 13 of Gen 3. The first part is for the fate of the Misfit Clan. We continue from the last episode where Nilius confronts Drago for breaking the strange tradition of combat to stop Nilius from nuking planets, but resulting in the Bakugan coming to Earth. You've confessed to your crimes. I wonder what would happen if the other Bakugan found out what you did. I fear that Bakugan would never, ever trust me again. You know, this whole situation with the lore behind Nilius and Drago not only made the feud between them as well as the Bakugan as a species interesting, but it really made Draco come off as a real life person to me. He acts and looks and sounds like a dragon, but he is someone who does try to do the right thing and he does end up making mistakes, and he tries to hide from the consequences of his actions. To me, these past couple of episodes really help boost the likability of Draco's character. I think this is what really separates Kyle Derrick's Dragonoid from Jason DeLine's Dragonoids. While Jason DeLine's Dragonoid seemed like an already powerful and morally incorruptible flawless character, Kyle Derrick's Dragonoid shows that he's not perfect, he's not the strongest Bakugan, he struggles with the same problems that humans do. He still has so much to learn about life itself. He's genuinely the most relatable Dragonoid that we have gotten. Not only does Kyle Derrick project the struggles he goes through very well vocally, but the writers really gave Drago a very decent character arc. It's actually really good. Now that Drago is caught in 4K, Nilius offers the ultimatum to Drago. Disband the Misfit Clan or the secret will come out. This is genuinely a very clever story that actually makes you think the existence of the group is put in actual danger. Though I don't know why they would believe someone who tried to blow up their planets and kill them all and control them, but whatever. Brawlers. Uh, why is there people in the background? We do see later people show up to watch the fight, but in this scene here, we see people are already on the bleachers when they shouldn't be. Um, whoops? So then why don't we brawl? And if we end up winning, we don't have to break up! If you lose, you will agree to disband! It's not my place to decide our fate. What do we think? I guess you're responsible, Dan, now. Wow, Dan is getting character development? Even though it comes out of completely nowhere because we haven't seen Dan show any signs of growth throughout the series, but it's better than when he was an annoying pissant the first few episodes. Cage, prepare what we've been researching. You always talk down to me. I'm not your servant. We're equals. I'm your partner, right? Is that supposed to be a uh, joke? Now Cage is getting character development while also furthering the relationship collapse between him and Nilius? Man, the writers really stacked this episode. So Jeff and Melissa tweeted about this fight, and wow, the arena got filled up really quickly. They sell out seats faster than most wrestling shows these days. Before the brawl, Cage talks to Dan, and hold up are you? But the brawl gets underway and Nilius reveals gold titanium evolution. Nilius' toy still looks but fugly. But Dragonite also reveals his gold titanium evolution. See, his toy looks awesome. If it isn't obvious, Cage gave Dan the data for the evolution. This fight was probably the best fight that we have gotten in this series so far. No joke, I was at the edge of my seat watching this. When Nilius has the upper hand at first, it really seems like Drago is struggling because he hasn't really learned to handle the evolution yet. The dialogue between Nilius and Drago is also incredible, with Nilius and Drago preaching their ideals, in performances by Alan Turner and Kyle Derrick being absolutely phenomenal. Alan Turner really gives off the crazy vibe, while Kyle Derrick gives off a very heroic and stoic presence. Dragon types are the strongest! You don't seem to understand, so I will show you my power! Are the misfits worth suffering for? I'll happily risk my honor to do what's right. You might never understand, Nilius, but my clan lifts me up. They have my back, and they make me stronger! The action here is reflective of their characters, where Nilius is focused on blind attacking full force, while Drago is patient and waits for an opening to counter, and he can really depend on Dan to help him when he needs it. The only thing I will say that could make this better is if we can get a reflection of their last fight since they seem to bring it up a lot. Last time Nilius only won because Drago was saving a Bakugan and used that as an opening to cheap shot him. What if in this fight Nilius tries to attack Dan and put him in danger to get Drago to protect him and use that as an opportunity to try and win, but Drago ends up learning from the last encounter and finds a way to fight back. That would have made this a lot more cooler and really give us more of a second chance encounter. But with what we got now, this is alright since the drama surrounding this is there, and Nilius dismissing Cage so much as he did in the beginning really bites him in the ass. 
The story of this fight was really one side obsessed with power that he can't depend on his partner, while the other is a ray of hope fighting for his friends. So in the end, Cage refuses to help Nilius and declares he's done with him and that gives Dan the opportunity to get Drago a bam and rain down fire to win. This fight was awesome! But oh no, this hooded figure found a way to get to the Kokito Drive. Why was this not destroyed like immediately? And we move on to My Fingers Were Crossed, where we start off at the exact same place that we left off with. Dan and Drago are still celebrating their victory, thinking that the misfits have finally got their message across to the other clans, but oh no, Nilius pulls an Eddie Guerrero and exposes the secret anyway. You know, Drago did break the tradition first, and it led to the very dire consequences. Even though this makes Nilius a hypocrite, you get why he did this. Dragonoid is the reason the Bakugan ended up on this planet! It is the truth! Hear me out! What about the humans? Meeting them has allowed us to evolve! It might be the shock at the moment, but I feel like this whole thing could have been fixed if Drago said, Nilius wanted to destroy your homes with you all in them! I stopped him and it led us to being here! This wouldn't have happened if Nilius wasn't trying to kill you all first! So the Bakugan all turn against Drago, but then suddenly a big red cloud appears and causes the Bakugan to rampage. Dude, stop that right now! Why aren't you listening to me? Uh, Razor isn't rampaging here. Why would any other Bakugan be listening to you? I think they mix Rip's dialogue with someone else's. What? That was right. a I was kind of hoping Chip would get killed here. I also want to know what this Vulture Bakugan is. It looks pretty cool. We can never put aside what you've done. You're a traitor. We'll never trust you again. I mean, you never trusted him to begin with. All you all have been is dismissive of him. But yeah, the other Bakugan doesn't want to help because petty reasons, Drago lied to them, yada yada, and the misfits go to stop the rampaging by themselves. As you can guess, it's not going so well. It really is a great piece of storytelling that the misfits managed to bring their message of diversity and unity, but because they can't look past Drago's mistake, they don't accept it. Even though it seems like the misfits made progress, they still have a ways to go because of the setback. The animation for this scene, though, is pretty good, mixing together hand-to-hand -to -hand combat and also the Pokemon moves. It's a really great piece of animation and really great combat to really watch. So the other clan leaders end up helping to save the city, but afterwards they still don't want anything to do with the misfits. Kinda hard to sympathize with them or understand where they're coming from when they were the jerks in the first place. Though the seeds of convincing them does seem to actually be progressing since they did have to join together to stop the rampaging, so at least this story is moving along. But we still don't know why those Bakugan suddenly went on a wild rampage. Four all at once, too! Four? There was a lot more than four Bakugan that went crazy! So, I guess the rampaging arc is back on. Ah, but it turns out the rampaging was caused by this guy in a very creepy but cool looking mask who stole the Kokido Drive. We could have prevented this! So I guess this guy is the real Sir Evil Von bad guy of the series. I'm going to give you a spoiler, his name is V, voiced by Ali Bacha, who has very evil plans later in the series. He was foreshadowed in the 7th episode, but I genuinely am interested in what he's intending for the Bakugan, but the episode ends on a cliffhanger. So that was episode 13 of Bakugan Gen 3. Let me know your rating of the show was in the comments down below. This was a very good episode, concluding the Nilius and Drago history arc very well with a huge bang. The action was spectacular, the cast gave very great performances, it was intense, it was emotional, it was really great storytelling and entertainment to watch. It really gave us a sense of Drago as a character, it showed the other clans aren't entirely bad, they're just immature jerks, and the story has been set up to really give our heroes some new challenges and facing old ones to continue the series. It was a pretty good episode that was absolutely a thrill ride. So I'll give this a Bakutastic. Thank you for watching this review of Bakugan Gen 3. Be sure to press the like button and give us a subscribe for more awesome Bakugan content. I've been Haru Ren, thank god for Rapid Fire, and Ventry is based. Bye!